And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! It is time. Sadly, sadly, it sadly. is time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, my brother, my son, third thing. It is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast, America's number one most popular film podcast hosted by a man in a top hat named bunny yes we are number one in that in that one metric yes well we time... also have church organist church organist yes i forgot about that it is time once again for us to do the bartman on into the second half of the show and it is said second act, wherein we finally in eventually get around to discuss our all-natural lemon-scented non-GMO extra strength movie of the week. And this week, we continue our summer-long look at a new genre of film that I have dubbed COVID exploitation, verbal trademark 2022, the Pope on Film and Undead Cow Studios, with a look at the hideous. 2021 action film COVID-19 Invasion, a.k.a. Lockdown Survival of the Fittest, a.k.a. Is This Even a Movie? It was an hour and 24 minutes, so it was a long fucking COVID movie. It it was an hour and 24 minute long film with about 10 minutes of plot. Yes. If that, the 95% of the film is in an abandoned high school. And I am feeling that Kevin Nash is kind of like Alice from Alice's Restaurant. Because all through the movie, I kept feeling like Kevin Nash. Remember Kevin Nash, star of this movie? He's starring in this movie. Kevin Nash. Remember? Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Nash. If you just saw the trailer, you've pretty much seen all of Kevin Nash's performance. Yes. Yes. He is barely in this. Yes. He is barely in this. But look at how big he is on the posters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of, uh, it reminds me of, uh, 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 that, that fucking Plan 9 remake. Yes. Where it's like, look who's starring in it. An actual actor. He was on WB's Charmed. Yes, this guy. He's starring in it. Okay, we're, we, we, we've had him for a day. He's gone now, and now Mr. Lobo is shooting zombies for the ending. Yes. So the tagline, Bunny, is if COVID doesn't kill you, they will. That's yeah. the tagline, according to IMDb. According to IMDb, this film had a budget of $3 million. No, 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 no. I hear you there, Jeannie, with your snide little comments. I think that that budget is 100% correct. This is how I break it down. 2.5 million of that went to Kevin Nash for a half a day of work, yes. and the rest went into making the actual film. Yes. I think I've nailed the budget. <laughs> because there is no way that the actual three million dollars was spent on actually making the film look good 95 percent of the film is in an abandoned high school or be coherent or be coherent which yeah. was actually a part of the apology at the end yes very much so okay so before we get in, in too too far deep into uh, NWO's asshole. Uh, it's the summer of twenty twelve. Of of the, it is the summertime in this the year of our Lord twenty twenty two, 
And every summer we here at the Pope on Film do themed summers. So we did the summer of Star Wars, which was not as fun as I had imagined it to be. People shit on Solo. That was that was a that was fun. I think if it I was, was just, one of the better ones. If I was gonna just put on a Star Wars film, just put on any Star Wars movie right now, j- just for something to watch, I'd probably pick Solo. I wouldn't pick Return of the Jedi or or <laughs> The Rise of Skywalker or any of that. No, I'd probably I'd probably put in <laughs> Solo. That was fun. The only problem uh, I had with Solo is that everything we possibly knew that happened to Han Solo from the original movies happened in this movie. Yeah. So what yeah. the fuck did, did Han Solo do with the rest of his goddamn life? Good question. No idea. No <laughs> you idea. know, like, you kind of have to spread that shit out. My favorite part of Solo is when they mentioned the art of Tierras Kasai. Yeah. Which is a reference to one of the worst Star Wars video games of all time. Yay! <laughs> it's canon. Okay, so so we did the summer of Star Wars where we watched all the Star Wars movies. We did the summer of Saw, which was surprisingly fun. Yes, we did the summer of Fred Willard, which was a freaking blast. And last year we did the summer of bottoming where we took a deep dive into IMDb's list of the 100 worst movies of all time. And now this summer we're doing the summer of COVID, the it, it, a whole year of COVID exploitation films, cheap films that were rushed into per, into production during the pandemic to cash in on the pandemic next week. We're doing a COVID slasher. Okay. I it, it, don't get too excited. I'm I'm pretty sure it's horrible. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm pretty sure it's just a basically a different version of this week's film. You know? Yeah. So so uh, I the big question this week is what the fuck is this? I I, I do not know. Okay, so like, it is the year 2039, and the world population has come down to 29 million. However, you can still apparently buy a brand new shiny truck. Yes. Because yes, Kevin Nash is driving like an all new 2025. It's Nissan Truck Month, and apparently in the post apocalyptic future. And your water is still running. You can still text people. And I think there is indication that there is still electricity as well. Yeah. It, what is this? A so this is a pre post apocalyptic science fiction movie with no science or fiction. What is this film? Is it an action movie? Because there's hardly any fucking action. And is there I, a drama? Is it a drama? Because there's no stakes. I don't know what yeah. this is. And uh, apparently, Saggy Sexy is hunting down and killing anybody. He thinks he has COVID. I'd hate to bring this back. I, I, I know how you feel about this show, and I hate to bring this up every episode, but this movie reminds me a lot of an action film film parody from season two of I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson <laughs> where uh, Santa Claus uh, stars in the action film Detective Crashmore. That's what this felt like. I saw Kevin Nash and it was like, oh, he's Santa Claus. Just, yeah. you suck! You know? And cussing and, you know, Santa's seen all of us naked. I'm not <laughs> sure if you know that. He's seen everyone on the planet naked to make sure that you don't have tattoos. Because if you have tattoos, you get nothing for Christmas. See, now that reminded me of what I wanted to talk about earlier. 
Okay. See the see I I had the realization. See Jarvis was throughout Tony Stark's Malibu beach house and controlled everything. Okay? Yes. And then he took on those same duties when it was moved over to Avengers Tower. Yes. Okay? Then Jarvis, along with some other fine ingredients, becomes Vision. Yes. So to the best of our knowledge, Vision is the only Avenger who knows the penis size of all the other Avengers. Yes. He knows if he if they wash their hands after taking mm-hmm. a poop. Mm-hmm. You know? He knows if they actually run soap over their entire body or just yep. selected bits. Mm-hmm. Vision is the one with the real secrets. He is. He absolutely is. So, I don't know how we got there, but let's let's just keep going. (laughs) I still need to get. I still need. I still need to start Moon Knight, and then I need to get through Miss Marvel. Uh, I'm a little bit behind. So much. You so much have to watch Miss Marvel, but then also watch the reaction videos from Pakistani Americans reacting to Miss Marvel. It is <laughs> fucking heartwarming. Yeah, it that's is awesome. Heartwarming, like that's cool. Like they are so seeing themselves being represented in this show down to minute details that it's just it's just it makes me incredibly incredibly happy watching how happy they are that's great that's so great so it's worth it just for that yeah yeah that's cool so okay COVID-19 invasion there's so little information about this movie. So we're really flying blind. And also, there's hardly any YouTubers reviewing this. I can only find one real review on YouTube. Uh, hardly any podcasters are, are covering this. So it really is sort of like, you know, there's no pilot on this airplane. Is this a science fiction film? Funny. Technically, yes, because it's set in the future. But there's no reason for that. No, there's no, there's no, yeah, there, there's no reason for any of this. But I absolutely love the idea that COVID's not going away. Social distance isn't working. Let's kill the homeless people. Why? Well, okay, but but if we drop down to a worldwide population of 29 million, there are no homeless people. If we have anything in absolute fucking abundance, it's homes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that made no sense to me. That made absolutely no sense to me. That's, that's, That's what also bothered me in other science fiction, where it's like, Oh, we we need to get gas. Gas is at a shortage. We can't get fucking. If you drop the population to twenty nine million, gas is everywhere. Gas is not a problem. Well, I I have a I have a lot of problems with science fiction. I I have I have such a hard time wrapping my brain around. I am a science fiction writer. I am creating my own world, my own entire universe. I am creating all of the beings in it. I am creating their biology. I am creating their skin. 
I am creating how they live and breathe and their language. I am creating every minute detail of this world. Here's a bunch of white people. Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? Come on. How is everyone still fucking beautiful fucking white people? It's science fiction. Beautiful you can make life. plaid people. Yes. You're fucking not one Mexican in your whole fucking science fiction. It you pissed me off. Like yeah. It pisses me off. This movie, this, this movie is, it's been so long since I've seen a film that is this less of a film. This is almost yeah. not a movie. Yeah. This, there's so little to this. It's not a film. It's so hard to yeah. It's so hard to talk about this cuz it barely exists. So, you know, Big Sexy's son who I kept thinking of X-Pac anyway. <laughs> yeah. 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 Decides he is going to go and kill all the homeless people who are all at the school, which would technically be a home. Yeah. It's indoors. They all live in there. It's a home. Let's go kill all the homeless people at the home they live in. And then and then our hero, who I kept having a really hard time taking seriously for many reasons, but in particular, he kept reminding me of that comic whose name I can't remember, who is an ex-Marine who was in the Jump Street movies. He's the host of Holy Moly. Is he? Yes. Rob Riggle! Kept reminding me of that guy. They look really similar. And, and I... And I also saw him with his shirt off. So those are two reasons I really, really couldn't take him seriously. He... This movie is a prime example of... <laughs> Let's pay a named actor to be in our movie to film for one day so we can advertise him. Yes. So so we can so we can advertise Lockdown Survival of the Fittest starring WCW's Vinny Vegas. Yes. <laughs> this is it. This is a painfully cheap ass low budget film. In fact, it's so low budget. If you are listening to this and you haven't seen this film, there is literally an afterwards, some text after the movie and before the end credits that explains this movie was made by a tiny cast and crew. We know this is cheap as shit, but please be nice. I'm like, yeah. It. I've seen a couple of Neil Breen movies at this point. None of them have apologies in the credits. Yes. Jesus, this movie. So it's loosely about COVID, but it's mostly about an active shooter situation in a school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's about it. So our yep. hero, for some reason, decides to go and save her, his crackhead sister. Which, come on, man, get with the times. It's all meth now. You go with meth or you go with fentanyl. Crack? <laughs> yeah. yeah, good going, boomer. <laughs> man, it, as, as, long as, as long as she's not on that angel dust. Yes, right? Bowser hated the angel dust. And what has he had? 
it's like I understand that, like, okay, this is a low budget indie film that was made on a shoestring budget by a group of people during the lockdown. I understand that. And I see the afterword that they wrote asking for people to be nice and thanking all the people who worked hard and how this is a labor of love. But a bad movie is a bad movie, regardless of budget. Yeah. You know, you this were is just bad. You were literally writing the script. While you were filming the movie, and it fucking shows. Fucking money plane was a better script than this. Yeah. The, the big thing, the big thing that I kept noticing is that, like, they kept having these reactions to different things that had happened to them, like how mean her parents were to her or something along that line and they would never tell us what it is the fuck that happened mm -hmm. like don't actually give us the background story yeah so I'm i guess just, you're saving that for the prequel yeah so i'm just and it was like it through the whole thing like they didn't they didn't want to actually tell you what was going on at any point in this movie? Like, because yeah. yes, and that's exactly it. They didn't know, so there's just nothing there. Yeah, this movie barely exists. This movie is barely a movie. It's like, well, should, what should I? What should I do in this scene? Like, I don't know. Cry and get all angsty over something. Yeah. This movie was written, produced, and directed by a guy named Micah Lyons. And this is true. His IMDb trivia states that he proposed to his wife after just six weeks and six days of dating, which I find fascinating because what that means is that um, this week's movie is not his only bad decision. <laughs> just yes. say it yes so yes. in this movie kevin nash wcw's oz plays a vengeful confederate loving santa claus and his evil plan is to set 90 percent of a film in a high school funny and then it's like, okay, Bonnie, why don't you explain the plot of the film? The plot of the film is like one sentence. I think we got it. Yeah. Like, this film doesn't exist. I was expecting this to be like, like an elite team of yeah. secret agents that had to know. This movie's very, Kevin Natch is barely in this. God damn movie. Let's talk about Kevin Nash. Let's talk about Kevin Nash. Okay. Kevin Nash. Four scenes. Four scenes he was in, total. He was in Magic Mike. He was in Magic Mike XXL. He was in two Adam Sandler movies. He was a bad guy in a pre MCU Marvel movie. He was he was in the first John Wick movie for fuck's sake. And his best performance ever, Rock of Ages. Tom Cruise's bodyguard in Rock of Ages. The man has had a career. How do you do those big movies? And you also are in Slaw. Yes. Remember Slaw? Yes. A masterpiece compared to this. Yes! And that movie sucks! Oh my god. I, I don't remember what episode Slaw was, but I know that it was ridiculously early in the pandemic. I think yes. we had already started the summer of Saw when we saw Slaw. That was difficult to say. I, I was actually still working in a facility. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so we might not uh, have quite ha- have hit the actual pandemic yet. Yeah, so this is a real classy film. There's a fart joke three minutes into the movie. That's a sign of quality. And you said that the star uh, looked like X-Pac. No, the son of Kevin Nash the, looked the like son. X-Pac. The star not, looked not terribly, but he reminded me yeah. of X Pac anyway. Yeah, the star of the movie looks exactly like the director tried to buy Ben Affleck on Wish. <laughs> yes. Okay. And this is what he got. I would also like to take this time to say that when Kevin Nash wrestled as Big Daddy Cool Diesel in the WWF, and he was champion during his reign as a WWF champion in the mid nineties, the live event numbers were the all time worst drawing numbers in WWE history. So it makes a sort of sense to now see big daddy, cool diesel, the, the, who had the lowest draw numbers in the history of, uh, the WWE now starring in, uh, Lockdown survival of the fittest. Yes. It makes a sort of sense. Uh, To be clear, Kevin Nash booked WCW, and that's why he always won. He was always the cool guy. He ended Goldberg's streak. The NWO always won. They never got their comeuppance. And as far as I'm concerned, Kevin Nash and Vince Russo killed WCW. Uh, That's why you don't let your star book all of the matches. There's yeah. also the fact that uh, We're looking Hogan, at you, Triple H. <laughs> Hulk Hogan also had in his contract that he had creative control over everything that his character did. Those two things, and uh, Kevin Nash is booking uh, Hulk Hogan's uh, uh, creative clause, and Vince Russo being Vince Russo killed WCW. Uh, and surprisingly enough, Vince Russo follows me on Twitter, which is fucking weird, but uh, <laughs> but but that's fine. Uh, so just want to be clear. Fuck Kevin Nash. Uh, yes. That being said, I still think the theme song to NWO Wolfpack was the shit, but that's beside the point. <laughs> he said some horrible things about Eddie Guerrero. Yeah. That I never forgave him for. He once said on some fucking podcast that like uh, when Chris Benoit held, uh, hugged Eddie Guerrero in the ring at WrestleMania is when professional wrestling died because you have these two men and they're carrying the belts and they're carrying the sport and they're not even bigger than the referee. OK, fuck you. <laughs> you got that old timey Vince McMahon. Uh, mentality of professional wrestling where it's like, okay, uh, you can't be champion because you're under six foot. Yes. Oh, you want to be champion? How much do you weigh? Oh, sorry. You don't weigh enough. Like fucking Daniel Bryan was like 150 pounds wet. (laughs) People fucking loved him and they still do, but... (sighs) So anyway, this movie sucks. Don't watch it. <laughs> don't watch it ever. You're not so going to miss anything. Whoop! Ten minute warning. Okay, I thought it was an action movie, but there's no action. I thought it was a drama. Nothing in it's dramatic. It's set in the future, but there's nothing futuristic about it. COVID kills most of humanity, but Big Daddy Cool Diesel is driving a brand new truck. It's an hour and 20 minutes, but there's 10 yes. minutes of plot. And you can still get your mail delivered. You can still get your mail delivered. And they, the they, thing they got the that thing they is, got the letter at the end saying it's yeah. over. They found the cure. Yeah. So that's the thing is that all of these COVID exploitation films that we're doing this summer. Uh, they all share a very similar situation. Cheap shit rushed into production to make a quick buck off of a deadly disease. You want to know how bad all of these COVID exploitation movies are? Let me tell you. So far, the best film has been 2025. 
<laughs> the world enslaved by a virus by German predator Joshua Wesley. That's how bad these movies are. Yes. <laughs> We're looking at this Christian anti-corona movie and saying, well, I had the most fun in this one. Like, that's how bad these movies are. Yeah. They are bad. Sure, 2025, the world enslaved by a virus was like some weird far-right Christian shit, but at least it was fun, funny shit. This week's movie is just crap. And by re- by when you read the afterword at the end of the movie before the credits, you can even tell that the filmmaker knew it was crap. You don't put that afterward if you made a movie you're super proud of. Yes. You put that in your movie as a way of saying, please be nice to me. Please. I tried my hardest. I did my best. So, yeah. According to IMDb, this film had a $3 million plot. $2.5 million of that definitely was to get Vinny Vegas of NWO Wolf back to do half a day's work. And the the other 500,000 went to actually making a film where 95% of it is in an empty school. Uh, I, this movie was hard. This movie was hard. And we've watched some pretty shitty films. Yeah. Last week's movie all took place in an elevator. The week before that, that movie hardly existed because they just got some Italian horror movie and redubbed it. Yes. To be about some sort of food recipe or something? I don't remember. <laughs> um, Fake Crying the Movie by Mitesh Patel was horrible. Yes. That yes. was the Tucson movie. And then 2025 The World Enslaved Slave by a Virus was horrible. But oh man, so far, I gotta say, this has been the absolute worst. Uh, yeah, and, and it's tough. It's tough to beat a summer of the worst movies, which we've already yeah. done, but somehow yeah. <laughs> this is doing it. Yeah, yeah. Like, if I had to choose between COVID-19 lockdown and the legend of Chun-Li, I'd be like, uh, Like, how much, how much time do I have to think it over? <laughs> Not much. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, a lot of the movies on the worst list, at least when we started out, weren't particularly bad. They were just boring. They, they were, were just, just nothing. Dumb. Yeah. There's a reason Madonna isn't starring in films anymore. Yes. And please, please summer. stop asking her. Can we get a United Nations ruling on this? Because I'm thinking her acting is just a crime against humanity. So, um, so that's it for our movie this week. Next week, we are continuing our summer-long deep dive into COVID exploitation films with a 2021 horror movie called The COVID Killer. Let me tell you the plot of it. Uh, it's Andrew Cuomo's New York, okay. and there's a mask mandate. Everyone has to wear a mask. Oh, you know what this is good for? Serial killing, because you can't see the murderer's face. So a serial killer starts killing people during the mask mandate and getting away with it because, oh, where's the killer? I don't know. He was wearing a mask. Everybody's wearing a mask. It's a covid slasher and it sounds great but i think it has even less of a budget as this week's film so i don't i want it to be good but it looks about the same level of crap as uh lockdown survival of the fittest yes so And then, originally, I believed that the the biggest movie would be this week's movie, COVID-19 Invasion, starring Kevin Nash. 
That is until I learned of the existence of the film Songbird starring um, Demi Moore, oh, right. Bradley Whitford, and Archie from Riverdale. So that is now going to be our big finisher because this is a big budget Hollywood film with actual famous actors set in a future where COVID-19 is like COVID-25 or something like that. And all of the people who have COVID are in these like camps and the lockdown has been going on for years. And so it, that is going to be our, 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 our big finisher this summer. Okay. Can one of these COVID films actually be good? That is the question that we are going to ask. Because 2025, the world enslaved by a virus was shit, but at least it was laughable shit that I would gladly watch a couple of other times. On account yes. of it was so bad, there really is sort of a birdemic uh, Neil Breen quality to 2025, the world enslaved by a virus. But all of these other ones, I wouldn't touch again. With well, his fucking Braveheart speech alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll never oh, take man. out freedom. Yeah. To a crowd of three. To a crowd of three. Oh, man, you need to track down 2025, The World Enslaved by a Virus. The man who, the man who made the film. Uh, I'm not saying he's a sexual predator. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah, some yes, other people. <laughs> maybe some other people are saying that. We definitely aren't. We're more of a classy show. So, um, so next week we're doing the film The COVID Killer. It sounds great, but I I don't know if it's going to be any good, any better than this, to be to be honest with you. But now that I'm looking back at this week, oh man, NWO Wolf Pack, Dave Van Ronk, Cost Plus Drug Company. A website owned by Mark Cuban that can help you get lower prescriptions. Howie Mandel's prolapsed anus TikTok. That's an actual thing. You can Google it. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Man, I got to say, I think this has been a pretty good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. Yes, I agree. But I didn't want to step on your toes. I feel you make that distinction and not me. And, and I didn't want to impose. But yes, I concur with your assessment. Good, sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am May Lynn. And on behalf of Natasha and Jaden and Eleanor and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Okay, do mouse line for them. And you, and you do flushes and poopy tits. Okay, and now do your line. And you, and you pop tarts. And you pop tarts, nice, Eleanor. And you, and you crackers. And what? Wow, Eleanor, getting racial. <laughs> <laughs> Jaden, do you want a final word? Yeah. Cut you off in a sec. Hurry up. Two tarts. And you two tarts don't know.